So seedlings, um, who here starts, say, onions? Anybody start onions? A couple people start onions? Um, and when are you going to be starting your onions? When you plant onions? When we get around to it. When you get around to it. <laughs> 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 That's right. Next, next two weeks or so. <laughs> middle, middle, next two weeks is, is before the middle yeah, of February. About the middle of February. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get started too early because then i got to keep some heat in the greenhouse. Yeah. But onions are pretty pretty cold hardy, so. Yeah. We'll see. Generally, February 1st, February 15th is normal around if you ask people when they're starting onions. Um, and I, a lot of people start onions in these things called cell trays. Mm -hmm. You know what a cell tray is? Right? Um, it's got these little cells. Then you put one seed in each one. You can think about the word for a second if you'd like. But, um, so our side view is like this. Put our seed right there in the cell. Um, say it's February, we'll say February 15th. February 15th, you plant them February, I don't know, 19th. First little root comes down, say plus or minus. February 21st, got a little green shoot coming up. Nothing big, just a little bit of something. Um, maybe it's 23rd. Uh, 25th, a little more roots coming out. 27th, a little more, okay, a little, a little more green going on, on top. This year is the 29th, so February 29th. A few more roots coming out. Yeah, roots with me? Yeah. A couple weeks old, basically. My understanding is that at this point, February 29th, the um, onion has determined the nature and the quantity of soil it has to mm -hmm. work with for the rest of its incarnation. Wow. Maybe it's by the 23rd, but we'll say it's 29th. Um, my understanding is that the way that plants have evolved is to modulate the, the manner in which they build their bodies based on the environmental conditions that they find themselves in during each generation. Um, so basically they've got, you know, 50,000 um, years of genetic memory on what the best things are to do in each different unique environmental condition to, you know, get to seeds, seed for next year. So, I mean, what I like to think about is um, pigweed. Anybody ever seen a pigweed that germinated in middle of May, into May, um, by the end of August, just being this massive, just like, that's a sexy looking plant. Like that's a really <laughs> gorgeous plant, right? Five, six feet tall, easy, four or five feet wide, mm -hmm. massive, you know, clumps of seeds on it. You've seen those pigweeds. Yeah. And then you've seen the pigweeds that germinated in, in the middle of August or something. Mm -hmm. By the middle of September, they're about yay tall ish. And they've got their seeds out and they're and they're ready for the frost because they're you know they knew it was coming, right? So my understanding is those are not two different varieties of pigweed. It's not two different lines of pigweed. One germinates in May, one germinates in August. It's when they germinated in May, they read the environment. They said, okay, look, we've got long days. We've got you know, warm nights. We've got a good solid couple, couple months. We're gonna go for it. Let's go. Like, and they say, we're gonna fully maximize our, our, our inherent potential. The one that germinates in the middle of August says, uh-oh, Days are getting short, nights are getting a little chilly. Huh. We're gonna have frost here coming up pretty soon, maybe next full moon. Better get my seeds out before it's too late and I'm dead. Right, so that's, that's the plant actually reading the environment and determining based on its environment how it's gonna build its body. Now, my understanding is that we can use uh, corn, sweet corn uh, as an example. Um, I think it's about, you know, at about one week, they determine how many um, ears of corn they're going to set. At about uh, two weeks, they determine how many rows are going to be on each ear. And at about three weeks, they determine how many kernels are going to be on each row. Three weeks of the plant line? When the plant is three weeks after germinating, wow, okay. it is set how many ears it will have, how many rows will be on each ear, and how many <coughs> kernels will be on each row. This is according to the corn geneticists at Purdue. There's this, you know, cycle. Basically, it's each, each new leaf. So at this leaf stage, and at this leaf stage, and at this leaf stage, the plant basically reads the environment and sets its trajectory. Um, and, that's, and that's how they've evolved. So functionally, when we're setting our seedlings out in cells early to get a jump on the season, 
what we're doing, I like to think of, is keeping our children in their cribs um, till they're, you know, in second or third grade. Like, don't take a child out of a crib until it's in third grade, literally. Um, there was a really good book about this. Um, um, not, I mean, basically about this. There's a, I, I heard an interview by the author on, on um, Fresh Air, on NPR, it must have been like six or seven years ago, it was a while ago. This woman had um, adopted a boy from uh, the former, former Soviet Union after, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, um, 1990-91, um, the, the state basically was in rough shape, wasn't doing all the things it should, should have been doing, and there were orphanages um, that were basically understaffed. And so the kids, uh, they still had the diapers changed and they were fed, but they were way too many of them to have anything more than have the diapers changed and be fed. And they were literally kept in cribs. And this lady adopted a, a child from a Russian um, um, orphanage. He was seven or eight, eight or nine, I don't know how old he was, but he'd literally never been taken out of a crib except to be changed. And this kid was screwed up. And this was her book. Her book was about what it was like trying to parent and give all the love, all the time, all the intention, all this, the resources, you know, we're going to save this person. And how much of a destructive effect that had on him, psychologically, emotionally, you know, like he was, you know, it was in the book, he was 17, 18 years old and, and he wanted something at the store and she wouldn't give it to him and he'd drop his pants and like take a crap on the floor, right? Just like watch it. I'll get what I want. I know what to do to make you give me. Like at one point, he was angry with her and he broke her arm. You know, literally broke her arm. She had a career. She had she stopped her career. So, what happens when you screw up children when they're young, hardcore, is they're really screwed up adults, right? It takes a lot of work to straighten them out. And my understanding is that the more we keep them in their cells. Sorry to be making such a visceral point. I feel like I'm getting through to most of you here. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <clears throat> I do find the visceral points getting through to people in the way that sort of, well, this is best practice, actually. You would like to move it in two to three weeks, so I'll give you the best practice recommendations, but you're not going to really do it until I get the story. So, you know, that's the other half of this. Um, understand conceptually the effect. Right, and the other thing is, what's your potting soil? I said this last time. Um, think of your potting soil as like your, the, 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 the food you're giving your children between you know, birth and kindergarten. Um, are they getting formula and macaroni and cheese and chicken fingers? Or are they getting breast milk and you know, raw liver and fresh eggs and you know, you know, a, a wonderful, amazing diet? Whatever is in this soil or not in this soil between the plant's germination and being transplanted out is functionally the nutritional profile that is going to help that you know plant develop its immune system function, build itself strong bones, you know, develop the intelligence to think, you know, all, all these all these functional capacities that we want in our children that we understand good nutrition is helpful for. We also want in our plants. So I think I've made that case fairly, fairly um, convincingly.